power. Thomas Shelby has used this law against Luca Cangreta. Hannibal has used this law to escape a situation that if it weren't for the application of this law would have definitely killed him and his troops. And you, you can use this law to make yourself a mysterious being captivating people's attention. How can you do this? It will all be explained by the end of this video. But before you start using this law blindly, there are some dangerous caveats you need to be aware of or it will lead to your downfall. Laws of Power, Law 6. Court attention at all costs. Everything is judged by its appearance. What is unseen counts for nothing. Never let yourself get lost in the crowd then, or buried in oblivion. Stand out. Be conspicuous at all costs. Make yourself a magnet of attention by appearing larger, more colorful, more mysterious than the bland and timid masses. Observance in Peaky Blinders The Shelbys have killed the head of the Cangreta family and also one of his sons. Years later, the other son, known as Luca Cangreta, has gathered enough information about the Shelbys from his widowed mother and Luca is seeking revenge. Tommy Shelby. Warning guys, before I continue, there is a lot of spoilers coming in the next section. For those who haven't watched season 4 of Peaky Blinders, skip this section. Now, the Changretas serve the Shelbys with a black hand. Arthur, I'll just go serve the black hand. Jesus. I'll just go deliver the black fucking hand to the house. From Luca Changretta. In the fucking house! It's me. Come on. I don't know, I hope you. I don't need you to kill anybody, okay? So you're gonna take my boys and you're gonna bring them to the ring in seconds. Look at that corner, look. And men there, they don't know fighters. I don't like it. We're surrounded by soldiers, Arthur. Alfie's men were strip searched. We're all right. They don't know fighters. They don't know the fucking ropes. It's the pills and the booze spooking you, Arthur. Fucking job. My brother is dead. Interpretation The Changretas serve the Shelbys with a black hand. The black hand is a method of extortion and gangsters of Camorra and the Mafia were the ones who practiced this method. One of the Shelbys is killed before Tommy gets him to safety. Tommy is a vigilant being but he dropped the ball here. The Changretas wormed their way into a highly secured boxing match organized by Thomas Shelby. Even though his brother Arthur warned him multiple times during the fight that the corner men on the other side were acting unprofessional. They were acting suspicious and those men didn't know what they were doing. Tommy blamed the paranoia thoughts on the pills and cocaine that Arthur was taking. Arthur's gut feeling compelled him to check out what they were planning, so he followed the guy. Tommy then went after his brother and found him apparently dead. Now here is where this law comes in. He had to sell to the Changretas that their plan had worked. 
how could he do this best? By courting the attention of the entire room, feigning pain and hurt. Tommy Shelby is a master of body language. He controls his ego, which I see as the interface with which we operate in the world, or simply put, our mask. But don't confuse the ego with inauthenticity. Be very careful about that. By being a master of his ego, he controls what he presents to the world. Since he needs to sell the message that the Changretas has killed his brother, he courts attention at all costs and creates a compelling spectacle, which by the way is Law 37. When people do this, word will spread like wildfire about them, just as it will when you stand out in the crowd. If you apply this law, hopefully in its positive counterforce, which you'll be able to find in the description below, the ethical variant, you'll be an anomaly in people's mundane lives. As you saw, Tommy deliberately made himself look weak, vulnerable and not in charge to his family and the entire crowd. Here is a lesson I want to drive home. Most people watching want to know how to appear powerful and learn the body language of leaders. But to become a true leader, you have to know what being a follower is like. This includes their vocal tonality and body language. Are you wondering why? Here's the reason. It is so you can choose deliberately which mask serves you best in which particular situation. Again, don't brush this off as being inauthentic. There is a big difference which I won't cover in this video. But if you'd like to know, let me know in the comment section below. As mentioned in part 1 of this law, once people's eyes are on you, then you have a special legitimacy. You can use this legitimacy for a lot of strategic purposes, exactly like Thomas Shelby did. After Tommy successfully sold his message, he uses the situation to catch Changreta off guard and thereby defeating Luca Changreta. Get on your fucking knees and sign! I've got it all worked out. We need to make them believe that he's dead to win this war. Create an air of mystery. Robert Greene writes, In a world growing increasingly banal and familiar, what seems enigmatic instantly draws attention. Never make it too clear what you are doing or about to do. Do not show all your cards. An air of mystery heightens your presence. It also creates anticipation. Everyone will be watching you to see what happens next. Use mystery to beguile, seduce, even frighten. People are enthralled by mystery because it invites constant interpretation. They never tire of it. The mysterious cannot be grasped and what cannot be seized and consumes creates power. Keys to power. We secretly crave enigmas, people or things that cannot be instantly interpreted, seized and consumed. That is the power of the mysterious. It invites layers of interpretation. It excites our imagination. It seduces us into believing that it conceals something marvelous. Do not imagine that to create an air of mystery, you have to be grand and awe-inspiring. Mystery that is woven into your day-to-day -day demeanor and is subtle has that much more power to fascinate and attract attention. Remember, most people are upfront, can be read like an open book, take little care to control their words or image, and are hopelessly predictable. So, how can you become more mysterious? There are a couple of ways. First, practice silence and restraint. Second, make occasional ambiguous remarks. Third, be purposely inconsistent. And the last one, appear eccentric. Combine these four things and you'll create an air of mystery which others will magnify by trying to interpret what you say and do. An air of mystery can make the mediocre appear intelligent and profound. Mysterious people put others in a kind of inferior position, that of trying to figure them out. To degrees that they can control, they also elicit the fear surrounding anything uncertain or unknown. All great leaders know that an aura of mystery draws attention to them and creates an intimidating presence. 
If your social position prevents you from completely wrapping your actions in mystery, you must at least learn to make yourself less obvious. Every now and then, act in a way that does not mesh with people's perception of you. This way, you keep those around you on the defensive, eliciting a kind of attention that makes you powerful. Done right, the creation of Enigma can also draw the kind of attention that strikes terror in your enemy. Here's a great example of exactly this. Observance of the law. During the Second Punic War, the great general Hannibal was wrecking havoc in his march to Rome. Hannibal was known for his cleverness and duplicity. Even though Hannibal's army was much smaller than those of the Romans, he constantly outmaneuvered them. But one of Hannibal's scouts made a horrendous blunder. His troops were led to a terrain with the sea at their back. The Roman army blocked the mountain passes that led inland. And his general Fabius was ecstatic. At last he had Hannibal trapped. Fabius had sentries ready to execute Hannibal's man. Hannibal was dead trapped. In the middle of the night, the Romans looked down to see a sight of mystery. A huge procession of lights was heading up the mountain. Thousands and thousands of lights were heading towards the Romans. If this was Hannibal's army, it had suddenly grown a hundredfold. Perhaps reinforcement had arrived from the sea. The sentries argued heatedly about what this could mean. Troops that had been hidden in the area? Ghosts? No explanations made sense as they watched. Fires broke out all over the mountains and a horrible, horrible noise drifted up to them from below. Like the blowing of a million horns. Demons. That's what they thought. The sentries, the bravest and most sensible in the Roman army, fled their posts in a panic. By the next day, Hannibal had escaped. But what was his trick? Hannibal had created the puzzles of light and noise by tying torches. Guys, this is brilliant. By tying torches to the oxen carrying his supplies. The twigs were then lit, giving the impression that the torches of a vast army heading up the mountain. When the flames burned down the oxen's skin, they stampeded in all directions, bellowing like mad and setting fires all over the mountainside. Robert writes, the key to this device's success was not the torches, the fires or the noises in themselves, but the fact that Hannibal had created a puzzle that captivated the sentries' attention and gradually terrified them. Guys, here's what's important. As Hannibal demonstrated, when you find yourself in a tight spot, if you do something that can't be readily understood or explained, you'll provoke fear and confusion. Choose a simple action, but carry it out in a way that unsettles your opponent. A way with many possible interpretations. Make your intentions obscure. Don't just be unpredictable, although this tactic too can be successful, which we'll cover in Law 17. But like Thomas Shelby, create a scene that cannot be read. There will be no method to your madness, no rhyme or reason, no single explanation other than that which you present. If you do this right, you will inspire fear and the trembling sentries of your life will abandon their posts. The mysterious makes your forces seem larger and your power more terrifying. Reversal of the law. An air of mystery works wonders for those who need to develop an aura of power and get themselves noticed, but it must seem measured and under control. Do not let your air of mystery be slowly transformed into a reputation of deceit. The mystery you create must seem like a game, playful and unthreatening. Recognize when it goes too far and pull back. There are times when the need for attention must be deferred and when scandal and notoriety are the last things you want to create. The attention you attract must never offend or challenge the reputation of those above you. Not at any rate if they are secure. You will not only seem paltry but desperate by comparison. There is an art to knowing when to withdraw. Never appear overly greedy for attention, for it signals insecurity. And insecurity drives power away. Understand that there are times when it is not in your interest to be the center of attention. 
When in the presence of a king or queen for instance, or the equivalent thereof, bow and retreat to the shadows. Never compete.